Hey there, Synth Drones. Today we're going to be talking about when it's time to let go of synthesizers. Hi, I'm Pierre Ambient Drone. This is my channel where I talk about synthesizers. Hit the subscribe button and tap that bell to keep up with all of my synth adventures and dig deeper over on my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Pierre Ambient Drone. Don't forget to join my synth group on Facebook. All of those links will be in the description of this video, and I will include a comment with them as well. Well, let's get on with the video, and today we're talking about when it's time to let go of synthesizers. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any time at all, you will find that often when I speak about getting rid of synthesizers, I tell people to keep everything, not to sell nothing, and especially my number one rule is never sell gear to buy gear. However, you know, that's being very dogmatic, and I understand that, and I myself have sold gear in the past, and I have regretted it as well. However, now I want you guys to take this very seriously, because what I'm about to say could screw your life up if you don't pay attention. There is a time when you have to let go of gear. I don't like to use the word have to, but sometimes... We just have to let go of gear. There are some exceptions to the rule. Number one, your sense that you're thinking about getting rid of are making your life miserable. And you have tried all of the tactics to hold on to them and you still are not happy with the synthesizers. In fact, they're making your life miserable. Now, what do I mean by that? I've had synthesizers in here, and again, this is not synth bashing, so please, let's not go there. But I've had synthesizers that not only do not call to me, but I would look at them and I would cringe. And they would suck the energy out of me because of the workflow that was involved in using them. Or maybe it was the sound that I just didn't like. There is no such thing as a bad synthesizer in my world, okay? But there are synthesizers that I don't get along with. All right, so I hope that makes sense to you. There was a synthesizer here that uh, I received after my friend uh, passed away. It was his synthesizer, and I loved my friend very dearly. And he committed suicide. Nobody exactly knows exactly why he'd done it, but um, I was able to obtain one of his synthesizers. And it sat here in my studio for quite a long time. And every time I looked at it, I would just cringe. It just made me feel bad. And this was a fantastic machine. It was, it was just, I don't want to say the model number of it because this has nothing to do with it. But every time I looked at that synthesizer, I, you know, I remembered my friend and it carried memories. And I tried packing it away for a little while, but it didn't matter. I knew where it was. I had to let that synthesizer go. There was too many memories to it. So that was an emotional sell. To this day, I cannot own that make and model of synthesizer because of that experience. And, you know, when you lose somebody, especially to suicide, uh, it, it plays with the mind a little bit, right? Things roll around. So anyone out there who has experienced this, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, but there's other exceptions to this rule that I want to go over with and about keeping your gear and never selling gear. And that is when you're absolutely broke and you absolutely got to pay the bills, and you've got gear sitting around that you haven't used and I don't know how long, uh, you better consider your family. You better consider your living conditions. You should consider uh, your food intake, right? Um, the important thing is, is that you don't go broke getting these synthesizers, right? That's important because I have talked to a few people over the last few days, and it seems that there are people out there who will go broke buying these synthesizers or run themselves into debt. So there are exceptions when you have to let go of synthesizers. Now, this is the big one right here. Um, your music doesn't fit the synthesizer. Now, I know what some of you might be out there saying, and it could be partially true. It could be 100% true. It just depends. Um, you can make a synthesizer fit anything that you do. I don't know. I mean, I guess you could, right? But we're just talking about practicality here. Um, I have bought synthesizers based on demos on YouTube. And I thought, you know, my, my wheels start turning, the gas gets turned on. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, this would be great. 
I should get this for the studio. And then when I get it in here, it doesn't really fit what I'm doing. It sounded great in the video, and it's a great machine, but it doesn't fit into my music. And sometimes we, we buy stuff on an emotional impulse, right? So emotionally, we want this synthesizer because I talked in another video about, you know, being addicted uh, to, to, to synth gear and I, I am an addict, okay? I can be. I have to control my urges. There isn't a day that I don't go and look on eBay or Reverb and I have to stop myself saying, I'm only looking. I'm only looking. And the bad part is sometimes, most of the time, looking turns into buying, right? Uh, so I have to abstain myself from, you know, I, I have to stop myself from doing that. Um, but the big thing is, is that, you know, these last couple of weeks, especially, I've been looking around in my studio, and somebody had left a comment about using what they already have. They, they watched one of my videos, and they were learning what they already have. And um, they said that they took my advice, and things are going better for them. And that's awesome. I love to hear when people are doing better because my videos have helped them. Uh, but I don't want people to suffer because of my videos where I say, you know, never sell gear, never let go of gear because it is being dogmatic. And when I say those things, I'm saying it in an emotional way sometimes, sometimes because I know that I've sold things and then I've wanted it back. So one of the tactics that I use is I pack things away and I, I store them for quite a while, up to about a year. And then I take them out and I play with them and then I, I try to make something out of them, something that I could use them for. If I find that uh, I'm not able to use it for what I had hoped I'd be able to use it for, I seriously consider about send, you know, sending it out and selling it and uh, using that money to buy more synthesizers. No, no, I wouldn't do that. No, I would never do that would never buy more synthesizers after selling one. <clears throat> but with that being said, uh, there is something else, you know, that I have to address when letting go of gear. Sometimes we get a synthesizer that's so packed full of features that it can replace another synth in your studio, or two or three even. And you have to ask yourself, do I have duplicates? Am I really just adding more and more and more uh, synthesizers? and I'm not really getting a different sound palette. I'm just kind of building on uh, to the gear I have, but not really changing my sound. And if changing your sound and having choices is what you want to do, if that's what you're trying to achieve with your studio, and you're looking around and you got one or two or three synthesizers that you could look at and say, wow, I could do that on this synth, and I could do that on that synth. Uh, maybe it's time that you consider uh, removing some of those synthesizers that are duplicates because um, sometimes we go a little haywire when new stuff comes out we get excited and we start buying it then there's one more exception and this is you know all this has to be taken with a grain of salt guys please don't take this like it's a religion or something and you have to follow everything I say 110%. When I'm doing these videos just a disclaimer here real quick I am talking per, you know I'm pertaining my, my bleh, can't lose my train of thought here. I'm talking about how I'm feeling, how I'm dealing with my studio, and hopefully it'll trigger something in your head where you could say, wow, you know, um, that's my situation. And if it is, you might want to consider these. But, but And that's why I'm saying this right now, because this is the big one. Um, sometimes you have so much gear that you've got stuff packed away and it never makes it way, its way back into your studio, and you need room for the new stuff coming in. And what's gotten me thinking about all of this is, you know, uh, Behringer. Now, we went on this big, you know, thing about how you say their name. I'm sticking with Behringer. If you guys uh, want to correct me, please look at the other videos, considering about Behringer. Just want to put that note in there. Um, here's the thing. Behringer's coming out with a lot of gear this year. I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting it's going to be this year. Um, UBXA, okay? They already talked about the Crave, the 808, the 909 clones, um, the MS-101, and uh, the Pro-1, okay? I probably missed one or two there. But there's a lot of people that, you know, they want to take about 
2000 bucks, give or take, okay, I don't, I'm not exactly sure how much all this stuff's going to cost. And they want to build themselves a nice little studio, and they've already got a studio, and I'm one of those people. I want to build um, a little Behringer section in here. And I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, you know, I got a lot of gear back here, and uh, some of it I don't use a whole lot anymore. So what am I going to do? And I really want to get my hands on this Behringer gear, and I need to make room for that. And I think now in my, uh, you know, studio life and the things that I've been doing and the directions I've been turning, I think now's the time for me to make these moves uh, to release some of the gear that I have and let somebody else enjoy it and love it and uh, make music with it. And I got some things that are just sitting around that, and they're not, they're not being used for music and it's a shame. So, you know, uh, sometimes you have to say goodbye and it's hard. It's very hard. And it takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of thought because you don't want to get rid of something that you're going to want to buy again later on. And I've been, um, you know, I've been guilty of doing that, you know, selling stuff and then repurchasing it. And luckily for me, I, it hasn't cost me any money, but it's cost me time and emotional energy. So uh, letting go of gear is not just an emotional decision it's a tactical decision that's that's the thought i want you uh to think about before you go out and you say well you know pure ambient drone said it's okay to sell gear i think i'm going to do that but i also don't want you to think that i'm some kind of hypocrite that says don't sell never sell hang on to everything um i have said that in my videos and that's because i was going through an emotional thought process where i was missing some gear that i had craved and was sorry I got rid of it. And I want you guys not to suffer that. And I want you to make better decisions when getting rid of your gear. That's that's the important thing. So with that being said, in the comments below, why don't you share with us some of the things that you're looking around after watching this video and you're seeing in your studio that you probably want to get rid of. And, you know, talk about it a little bit in the comments section. Love to hear your thoughts. Uh, but also... Please include how you got rid of something in the past and it just sucks because you want it back and you miss it and you made a mistake because this will help people that are reading the comments and watching this video to be able to assess whether or not they're going to make a mistake or at least add something to their thought process. As usual, I love all of you guys. I hope you guys are subscribed to this channel. If not, let's do that right now. And uh, meet me over at patreon.com forward slash pure ambient drone so that you can dig deeper. Right now, I got a little money series going on there. Why you're not making any money with your music. Pretty uh, cool stuff. And you won't find it on this channel. I might include episode seven on this channel. I'm thinking about doing that. So watch out for that just in case I do. Until next time, keep calm and synth on.